in the morning for reasons I'll explain in a moment. Um, so, but there's no reason to turn, to turn to us why it couldn't have been used on a Friday. So the question was why Thursday? Well, on the evidence, there were four possible reasons. That either all four of them operated together, or one, or, or a combination. But obviously there was an unsatisfactory reason lurking behind the decision to go to Thursday. But it was an unsatisfactory reason that couldn't be disclosed to us. There were four possibilities. The one was the one which was disclosed in a, in a, in a conversation between the provincial commissioner and, and some of the, the London officials on the Tuesday. London have got, had the charming habit of recording conversations without pe telling the people who, who, whose, recordings were, whose conversations were being recorded. And the, in this conversation, the, the provincial commissioner said to London, we've got to act tomorrow, this is, this is said on Tuesday, we've got to act Wednesday. Wednesday. Why? Well, Mr. Malema may come. And if Mr. Malema, you remember what happened at Implants? There was a, I think it was Implants, there was a strike there and Mr. Mr. Malema came and he spoke to, the, spoke to the strikers and they stopped striking. We can't have Mr. Malema coming and stopping the strike. So we've got to act tomorrow. A totally extraordinary statement that so he condemned very strongly by everybody. Well, the, they couldn't implement it on the Wednesday because they were still negotiating with the strikers to try to get them to lay down their arms peacefully. It would have been a, 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 a breach of good faith to, to have implemented the plan on, the, on Wednesday. So it, it, so it was going to be done the next day. Mr. Matunjwa, which meanwhile, Mr. Matunjwa of AMCU and um, Mr. Sikulala of, of NUM came spoke to the strikers, Mr. Mr. Mutunjwa was quite confident that on the Wednesday afternoon that he could get a breakthrough the following morning and persuade them to lay down their arms. And he promised to go back at 9 o'clock and speak to them. So clearly it wasn't possible to implement this, the early, early morning plan. The first plan I spoke about, this risk -free, relatively risk-free plan, could only be implemented very early in the morning. It couldn't be, that, that couldn't be implemented because whatever was done had to be done after 9 o'clock. In the result, um, they had to act, they, they acted, uh, they didn't have to act, but they acted uh, just before four o'clock in the afternoon. So they had to abandon the, the, the risk-free plan, and they knocked together another plan, which was condemned in the strongest terms by the expert. Uh, by the expert. Um, let me tell you what uh, was said by um, Mr. White, who was the expert from, from Ireland. Um, the plan really was this. The, um, the public order piecing piece would advance on the strikers, on the copy. Try, try to, to dis, disarm and disperse them. If they, and using non-lethal methods. If they failed and the strikers reacted against them, as the intelligence was that they, they might well, uh, they were to take refuge in the Indianas and, and they would be then covered by the the tactical response team, who were armed with R5 rifles. Um, well, Mr. So, so Mr. What, what Mr. White said about that was the following. Um, he was particularly critical of, of this plan. Um, the, the evidence leaders talked about the, the absence of any measures between the POP members using less than lethal force and a TRT line of 60 members operating as a firing squad. He, and then he said the, the, plan, the plan was for the TRT members to engage the crowd if the POP members moved out of the way for their own protection. It was said that they would do that this proportionately. Mr. White said this, I kept looking for someone to say, so what does this mean? Let's put it into plain English. They only have R5 rifles. So what we're talking about is shoot people. That seems to be what's going to happen. All right, that was uh, Judge uh, Ian Farlam uh, addressing uh, the ISS there. We're going to go for a short break and have more news for you thereafter.